Algorand Governance Period 3 voting is about to start. We are going to take a look at the votes, what they mean. I think these are pretty significant votes, and they could uh, make a big difference on how governance, how Algorand works in the future. So follow me along. We're going to walk through today on today's Frugal BC. Hey guys, what's up? Frugal BC here, and uh, we're going to talk about Algorand Governance 3 today. Um, and as you know, we kind of covered this a little bit when we viewed the Algorand All Hands community event that just happened uh, recently. And as you know, we live streamed that. Not something I'm always able to do, but uh, I was glad I had the time to in my schedule to work that out because that was that was really interesting. It was fun watching them. Uh, it's fun following along with you guys and chatting along with it while we watched. So that was really cool. But uh, we're going to go into the actual votes, break them apart, kind of tell you about how it all works. And uh, well, I'm not going to tell you how to vote. That's up to you. But I make sure you have an informed choice when you go into the polls tomorrow <laughs> and uh, for the next two weeks. Again, before we do that, I'd uh, love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. You know, that really helps the channel and helps you guys see all our videos on Algorand and sometimes other blockchains, too. You know, I, I say this a lot, but I'm not exclusively an Algorand channel, but I tend to focus on Algorand because the projects just simply works so well compared to other blockchains I've tried. Uh, our, our channel is all about, we just do the experiment. You know, we try this stuff out, let you know how it goes and give you the good and the bad. I think there's always like, there's always trade-offs. There's always good, good stuff and bad stuff involved most of the time. Sometimes I really can't find much, but uh, I do try to find stuff from both sides. So that's the channel. Hit that like button for the algorithms if you don't mind. And uh, let's dive right into it. Okay, so yeah, as you know, we are in period three. This is the third governance period we've had since we started. And uh, you might notice at the bottom, I'm not eligible. We will count that. We'll talk about that in a second. So the period started May 31st, goes to June 30th. And uh, a little bit unusual, usually you see it smack dab in the middle of that period. So usually if it's it started in April 1st, you'd see uh, May, it'd be May 1st to May 15th where the vote is, but this time they moved it back a little bit. Uh, there are 70.5 million algos up for grabs, and that's going to be split amongst 55.7 thousand governors and 3.6 billion algo. That's a lot of algo. But I really want to focus on uh, the period three voting session. So that's what we're going to talk about most today. It says session one. I don't know if there's going to be another session. I don't, I don't recall them saying anything about that in the all hands. Uh, as you can see, this is far less than I usually committed, and I am not eligible. So I'm going to take a little sidetrack just to tell you why. Um, I'm just finding too many opportunities to earn far better rewards than that. Uh, for example, Tiny Man, and you know we've talked about Tiny Man. I have plenty of videos on them. They have had this U.S. dollar coin algo stake. In effect, let's go back a little bit because they have a few. They have U.S. dollar tether with algo, U.S. dollar coin and US dollar coin and US dollar tether. And that one's at the lowest. Right now, US dollar tether algo is a little bit higher in APR than USDC algo. But honestly, I've been seeing the most rewards out of this USDC algo pool. So if you go to manage, uh, yeah, so the rewards APR has been 15.2%, pool APY at 13.46%. Um, I have 253 pool tokens. That's a total of about $361 total. Uh, as you know, the price of algo has gone down, so I think I had a little bit higher of a commitment when I first started. But I've been earning about, yeah, it's been about 0.377 per day. If I could claim those now, I'm, I'm just going to hold off a little bit. And uh, total, I've made 15.2 algo in that period for about 81 days. On, and I'm trying to remember how much, it's probably about 500 algo or so. Uh, total, you know, obviously now they're paired together, so it's a little bit different. I think it's about 250, roughly, maybe a little, little bit less, or 500, maybe a little less. And so this is just one opportunity, and this is like super stable. This just keeps adding every day. They used to make you, it used to be a weekly payout, but they see they changed that. And this was supposed to go through the end of May, so it should have been ending soon. But now, as you can see, uh, it's not going to go through August 1st, and who knows if they'll extend it again, but that's at least a good, is that six months? I don't do public math well, but let me see, March, 
April, May, June, July, August, yeah, about five months. Uh, so that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, and there's a lot of other opportunities besides that. That's just one, that's just one example. Uh, I'm doing a lot in yearly. Algo Fund has been my latest new favorite. Uh, they've had some really great farming pools and a uh, staking pool that I've been able to finally find something to do with my orbital gnome strikers. So that's kind of nice to be earning that money. Yieldy has been great. Algo Fund, uh, Algo Stake has been, I've been pretty happy with that one too. I should probably do another review video on that because uh, I've been really happy with that. But enough of that. The point is like I found a lot of opportunities and that actually segues into one of the votes in the period three voting session. So let's talk about that because this to me, this was the headline of, of the all hands. And this is the vote. It's uh, including DeFi participants in governments. Governance. Uh, Algorand Foundation believes that active participation in decentralized finance is fundamental to the health of the Algorand ecosystem and that our governance platform must do a better job of recognizing and rewarding the outside contribution of DeFi participants, large and small, across the range of project types. Yeah, so basically, uh, we like DeFi. And right now, the thing that I was just talking about, this is the, this is the choice that they were forcing people to make, either commit a bunch of money to governance to get stable but kind of small rewards, or take a little bit of risk and go, go for more DeFi stuff. I don't think it's that big of a risk, to be honest, but it is a risk. There is risk involved when you do DeFi. So in much more than, than governance, your only risk is like, you know, getting kicked out, which I did. Um, I just said, you know what, this stuff is more important. I, I, there's just better returns to be had in so many other areas. I'm like, why should I participate in government? So I just don't understand it. But now, uh, if this goes forward, you'll be able to do both. Yeah, granting governor status and twice the voting power to qualified DeFi projects as described below, whilst maintaining the same governance reward program to algo holders that commit for the governance period. Uh, so yeah, and then they support, obviously support option A. That's what they talked about. Stacey Warden talked about that. And it kind of makes sense to me. It's like, it's like if you're, why commit to the static website? is the why that's why would that be preferable to actually participating in the ecosystem right it's like it's like if you want people actually using your your token a bad a, a, a good way not to ensure that is to have them lock stuff up so in this in this sense this this helps a lot so i, I normally don't weigh in on this stuff but this just makes a lot of sense i don't know if the double status was really necessary um I, it's fine, you know, they can do what they want. I don't, I don't really care either way. I just like the fact that you can still participate in governance and actually use your Algorand because let's face it, we all want to use it, right? I mean, some of us don't and that's fine. And I still think governance is a great option for people who are risk averse. If you just want, you know, you're going to get this steady return. That's not super great, but it's not nothing. It's qualified projects were in the right to vote on behalf of their users in the voting session in the governance period. Voting power for qualified project will set as twice the daily average TVL of Algorand project over the period of the first day, sign up window until the day before the voting session opens. I don't know why it has to go to the project, so I suppose it's easier to manage, but I'm assuming that they're going to, uh, I guess I guess maybe I shouldn't assume that, but it seems likely that they'll distribute that to their users in some way, or at least some of it, but it it's going to make, yeah, they're not, I'm sure, I assume the projects are going to make sure they vote, which is interesting. Because uh, a lot of people drop off. What you'll see in the next, because this is starting in a day. As a, I don't know if I mentioned that early on. I should have. This starts in one day, and what you, and it goes for 15 days. And what you'll see at the end of that 15 days is a huge drop off in the number of governors, almost double. So certain projects that are, I assume it's going to be most of the main ones that we're aware of. I, I would assume. Again, that's another one that they didn't really talk about that in all, all hands. Um, I think they kind of said it was coming, as I recall. And then the XGovs ones, this is just more details on the XGov. And it says, oh, we believe that a governance structure that allows the algorithm community to impact the most important decisions is fundamental to the long-term stability and continued growth of the algorithm ecosystem. In the first round of voting earlier this year, a large majority of our governors voted in favor of the creation of a new tier of expert governors. Here we share a proposal to translate translate the principles behind gov, ex -gov tier into operative rules. Governors should decide between the following two options. Approve the mechanism as described below, establishing a process for bringing community measures to governance votes. 
community at large can propose measures, the ex-governors vote to promote them to governance ballot subject to final editing or, you know, don't do that, basically. <laughs> so basically, uh, we voted for the ex-gov last time, and I thought there were so many questions that it just, that just weren't explained. Like, it was, it was there, there, I, had, I had so many questions, and I just, I don't know if I voted for it or not, to be honest, I don't remember. Um, but I thought, like, it was, it was really strange just not to really spell out how it worked, and now they've kind of spelled it out more. It's like, it's, anyone can put up can put up these measures with this team of ex-govs will that are basically going to be DAOs from what I understand. Uh, they will they will vote to promote them up to a ballot where you would actually be able to vote on these. So um, it's not a bad, it seems like not a bad system. Maybe, maybe this makes me a bad algorithm person. I just don't care that much about like just keep it running, keep it going well, and get otherwise get out of the way and let all these projects come in and do their thing. And that's that's so much more important to me than. Like, I don't really care what goes on behind the scenes that much, to be honest. Like, you know, just keep it stable, keep it moving, and otherwise get out of the way. That's that's what I think. So, but hey, you know, uh, if you care about this stuff, go ahead and participate. It's cool. So that's kind of the details of the upcoming votes. Um, so th those are the ones you would vote for. I'm not going to be voting for them. And, you know, the other thing that and I, I've said this in the past videos, one of the things is it seems like your vote doesn't really count because unless you were a huge whale, it's like the whales have the most power and they're gonna do the things that benefit them the most. And you know, you can say whether that's right or wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't really care about that argument. It doesn't matter. It's like at the end of the day, reality is reality. Water is wet and this is the way it is. And I just don't feel like you really have that much of a voice anyway. So what's the point? I, I, but I like that at least DeFi participation is going to count towards it. Hopefully, uh, these platforms seek users' input from their users on that, because I think that's really important. If, if you look at the major, you know, we can look at that, actually. Let's look at that. Here we go. Yeah, so, yeah, what do we got right now? This, this is period three. Uh, 3.6 billion Algorand committed, and... And how many governors? 55,000, 55, six. So uh, 3.6 billion, I guarantee you, because how much would each person have to have? Let me do the math really quick. Yeah, so that, that's an average of 65,454 65, algo. Uh, I guarantee you most of the wallets are much less than that. So that means there are some big whales in here. And look, right now the period percentage reward is 1.95. That's a 7.79 APR. And that'll grow. Like I said, you probably you'll probably see this number drop down to about, you know, in the 30s. Uh, that's pretty typical. You see you see a big drop off after the vote because just a lot of people don't vote. And we can see that this is what happened last time. Look, we lost 29,000. So that was that was actually 60 some thousand and it dropped to 37. So you might actually see even more than what I just said. And there were 2.8 committed last time. What did we say? 3.6. So there's more algo and fewer governors. Uh, I guarantee you it's, it's a whale's market. So you see what I'm saying? Which, you know, uh, you, like I said, I'm not here to debate whether that's fair or not. I don't know if it is. And, you know, if you put up, if you have more, more algo, you're more committed to, you're you know, more financially committed to the Algorand ecosystem, so maybe you should get more vote. But some might say, well, isn't it better if everyone just had closer to equal? So, you know, again, that's not for me to debate. Um, all I'm gonna say is like, from my perspective, that means, you know, I have, I have a decent bag of algo, but I'm, I'm certainly no whale. So my vote, I feel like my vote really isn't gonna count much anyway. Uh, we saw how lopsided it was. Uh, this the XGov one. I, I feel like a lot of I saw a lot of commenters talking against it, but like the vote was overwhelming, so that tells you that the whales were in it. But that's again, you know, it's fine. So uh, I just want to put that out there, so you guys have the information, so you can make a, an informed decision if you are going to be voting, if you're going to stay in governance. Like I said, it's great if you are risk averse and just want a way to make some rewards without a lot of risk. That's a great way to do it. Um, I prefer other stuff. I just think there's better opportunities out there with all the new growing DeFi systems. And I, I do hope the DeFi passes. I just don't, I'm, I don't hold the illusion that my vote would have counted for much with uh, my fairly small algo bag comparatively. So 
Again, thanks so much. Love to hear your comments. Love to hear what you think about these two votes and about Algorand governance in general, or what your favorite DeFi project is that you're participating instead. I'd love to hear that too. Leave it all in the comments. Uh, stay safe, hodl, do your own research. And as always, I'll see you in the future. Thank <laughs> you.